So, hello everybody and welcome to this podcast interview with myself, Alessandro Alonso. I am here as the founder of Women in Travel. Women in Travel is a social enterprise that aims to leverage travel and tourism to empower, economically empower women. And I am here with Natalia Cohen. I'm delighted, Natalia. I love your tan. You are in South Africa. You are in 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 the sun so thank you for joining us and i am delighted to have natalia here to talk to me about her experience of change um iwd is approaching and that's what uh why we are celebrating women and we are interviewing natalia now natalia i met um at walter market and not only has she worked for over 15 years in the travel and tourism industry already, but more impressively, she told me that she had recently completed a role across the Pacific Ocean as part of the first ever all-female crew. Now, that seriously is impressive. So I thought I should invite Natalia not only to do this interview, but also to be uh, part of my advisory board for women in travel, and I am delighted that Natalia has accepted. So, Natalia, um, tell me a little bit. Um, International Women's Day 2017, I think it's very important that we continue to celebrate this day. And this year, they invite us to be bold for change. Crossing the Pacific Ocean, uh, rowing across the Pacific Ocean requires courage. Indeed, it requires one to be very bold and also to be able to deal with change, address change and possibly enjoy change. So tell, tell us a little bit about your experience and how you see change and how you came to it. Perfect. Well, hi, Alessandra. Um, it's an honor to be here and to be part of um, the Women in Travel social enterprise that we're heading up as well. Um, I think for me, not only accepting the challenge to row across the ocean, but actually getting to the start line and then completing the journey was a huge insight into the basic law of nature, essentially, which is that everything changes. And for me, I've always tried to be open to opportunities when they've come my way. And I think it's been about taking that leap of faith and not being afraid to deal with change when it's going to happen. For me, change and stepping into the, um, stepping into the unknown is when we do our biggest changes personally, we do our, our biggest personal development, we have our biggest growth and Rowing across the ocean definitely gave me that. So I was part of the first all-female team. Uh, we rowed from San Francisco to Cairns in Australia. And the journey took us three months longer than we anticipated. So all in all, we spent nine months out there at the mercy of the Pacific Ocean. And I don't think there was a day that went by or a two-hour shift. So we rode in two-hour shifts, two hours on and two hours off, 24 hours a day, uh, where we actually knew what to expect. So every day and every two-hour shift, we were presented with a changing situation and a changing landscape and a changing mental state as well. And I think being bold for change is about empowering yourself to deal with the challenges that you're going to face in life and also to deal with the ever-changing situations that we find ourselves in. So it was a, a huge learning curve and a really wonderful opportunity to develop mental resilience as well out there because dealing with change and being bold is essentially learning how to manage your thoughts because it's our thoughts that create our behaviors and our actions and determine how we react to other people in situations. So at the end of the day, being bold for change is always going to start right here. Absolutely. And I think uh, in my experience of meeting women who are starting their businesses, running their businesses, or indeed trying to make a successful career in travel and tourism, their, uh, you know, their mental resilience is fundamental, fundamentally important. As much as 
what you mentioned, you know, empowerment and give ourselves the power to deal, address and, you know, take positive from change. I feel that often women um, don't empower themselves. So um, empowerment is a word that some people say we shouldn't use because it implies that somebody else gives us the power and we have the power within ourselves. Actually, I would argue that as women, our biggest problem is that we don't allow ourselves to be powerful. So we don't give ourselves the permission to be powerful and empowered. And therefore, you know, when you make, when you take the decision, when you make the decision to change, however big or small, not everybody's going to row across the Pacific Ocean. However, you know, even if the change is about something to do with your personal life or with your career, that's also a step to, towards empowerment and what will enable you to actually benefit from the change because you are allowing yourself. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it all starts with yourself at the end of the day. And I think for a lot of women, they're so busy thinking about other people that they don't take the time and energy to really work on themselves and and what that listen fully listen to their inner voice as well and develop that self-confidence and I think what I found out the ocean was that we had to develop our own personal mental resilience before we could then be better placed to help support and and help the others in the team as well because it's all about that ripple effect you know once you're strong and in that place of power and strength then you can help others and that just leads on and on and on um, and I suppose that's what Women in Travel is all about it's about empowering everybody within our community by creating this network and supporting and encouraging one another at the same time and and yeah I agree exactly with what you said it's it's starting a new business whether it's that or entering a new era of your life whether it's having children or doing a huge challenge whether you decide to run your first marathon or get married or anything it's all about losing sight of shore which is what I say is when you literally row away from land and everything you know and you step into that uncertainty and I think for a lot of people that they're, they're afraid to take that leap into the unknown because it, it is going to be scary and you are going to question what you're doing but what I found was that you just had to keep on going and you had to persevere and eventually you would always see land again. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons I learned out there was just persevere and be unstoppable and keep on going. Make sure that you're always focused, but also don't forget to enjoy the journey at the same time. And I think as women, we're quite often thinking so much about other people that we forget to actually enjoy the journey as well. Yes, and, and picking up on that point of leaving, leaving the shore behind, uh, losing sight of the shore that you talk about, I've heard you talking and writing about it, which I think is very interesting. Um, often, you know, we rely on other people or we say that, you know, something is not achievable, is not possible because we are on our own. Now, network as you know and groups like women in travel exist in order to give that support and in order to provide that that kind of sisterhood if you like that mm -hmm. enables one not to feel alone or, or at least to have somebody to turn to when uh, when you need to speak when you want to mentor want you when you are in need of some inspiration how you know how did you in your journey find a balance between your own self-resilience and relying on the other members of the crew? And how were you able sort of to do a little bit of both? Because I imagine that at a time you will have been, you know, you would have been in need of support. Definitely. I, I think there, there was such a strength that came from the team and we were all completely different people, really very, very diverse and we all brought very different strengths to the boat. 
And what happened was we were never really all down at the same time. So there was this wonderful opportunity to help lift each other up when we needed it. But ultimately, we, we needed to get ourselves out of our holes. You know, we all had our own personal demons that we had to fight and we had to battle. But we also knew that we, we could support one another. We had this unquestioning trust in the team. And I think having that respect as well it all boils down to, to respect and trust and i think that's something that a lot of networking groups can can very much offer and you know that you're supported through whatever challenges that you're going to have to face um, we use humor a lot to get us through the challenging times and for me it was always a case of trying to bring myself back to the moment and not only to be in the moment as much as possible but to accept the moment because I think quite often we spend a lot of time trying to control things that are completely out of our control so we had a saying on the boat where it was control the controllable and then deal with everything else step by step or stroke by stroke for us literally and moment to moment because that that way we weren't concerning ourselves with the the past or worrying about the future we were just dealing with that two-hour shift and trying to support one another through it. We were also very open with how we were feeling, um, mentally, physically as well. And we had these review sessions every week on the boat where we had an opportunity to air how we were feeling. Because obviously you can imagine four women on a tiny boat um, in extreme conditions, sleep deprived, you know, we're, we're only human. It, was, it would have been very easily for us to just want to get off that boat or throw someone off the boat and you know there was nowhere to run and nowhere to hide so we needed to be able to confront one another and not to take things personally not to take criticism personally and to be able to be very open honest be vulnerable at the same time and also be our authentic selves as well i think that was really important just being exactly who we were because there was there was no hiding who we were in those conditions, that's for sure. Absolutely. And, and I think that's also true for business most of the time. And I find that, you know, when I go to events or when I speak to women, this element of being true to yourself and being authentic is critical because, you know, there's nowhere to hide. And when you try to hide, actually you're losing sight of who you really are and what really matters to you, which goes back to what you were saying about listening to your inner voices and making sure that you actually are absolutely, you know, careful with, uh, with, you know, being authentic, with being who you are, with, with making sure that you listen to the voice because those voices tell you the truth, ultimately, if you pay attention to them. Yeah. So can, can you actually train for that level of resilience or you know, is it about, you know, you mentioned about, you mentioned the sense of humor, you mentioned obviously training that you must have done, physical training that you must have done. You mentioned networking groups and oh, a certain element of sisterhood. What else can help you to build the strength and resilience for change, do you think, Natalia? Well, we, we did a lot of work pre-row with a sports psychologist. Keith Goddard and we worked individually and as a team and learned how to shift our mindsets because obviously it's all very well saying listen to your inner voice you know it's it's easier said than done you know we, we all have a thousand thoughts running through our minds and it's normally the negative ones that shout a lot louder than the positive ones or they're the ones we listen to those limiting beliefs the ones that say I can't do it I'm not yeah. good enough. Um, so we developed quite a lot of different techniques, which we called performance enhancing strategies. And we use those to shift our mindset, either if we were in a relaxed state, so maybe we'd just woken up and we needed to power ourselves up to be able to go out and row in a particularly challenging two hour shift with, with big seas and heavy wind and, and that type of condition. And then on the, the opposite spectrum, we also needed to be able to calm ourselves down very quickly. And that shifting in mindset was a, a fascinating journey in itself. So we used different techniques, which included uh, breathing 
is a, a very normal, wonderful technique just to recenter yourself and bring yourself back to the moment. And music for me was one of the best tools that would shift me very, very quickly from one state into another state and really helped with that change, actually. Talk about change. Music has this wonderful ability to put you in a very different place instantly. Um, there was also mantras that we would use um, that we'd practice before stepping foot on the boat and we knew how they would make us feel and which type of mindset they would move us into. Um, and then, as I said, humor was, was a wonderful thing. And at the end of the day, distraction techniques as far as we could as well, because there was so much monotony that we had to deal with, um, that we needed to just find our way to, to deal with 24 hour days, nine months of 24 hour days. Yes. So that it was, yeah, yeah. So humor, music, listen to more music, um, breathing technique, and I suppose part of that perhaps some yoga, or meditation, mindfulness type of exercise can all help with building your internal resilience. That's great. Thank you very much. So just a final question, Natalia, before um, we say goodbye. What change is coming up? What are the next challenges? And what are you going to do to be bold in 2017? Um, this year, uh, I've actually signed up for a 10 kilometer swim. So I'm keeping the theme of water because I love water. Uh, I hadn't actually swum for three years properly before about two weeks ago. So I'm really needing to start my training. It's a 10 kilometer swim. It's happening in the UK. And actually all of us as a team have entered it individually, which is really lovely. So it's almost like another team challenge that we're taking on. Because uh, it's, it's, it's great to have that focus and then you, you have the steps that you need to take to get where you need to go. Um, and also I'm speaking, so I'm talking about the journey and a lot of the insights and the lessons that I learned from the incredible Pacific Ocean and working within an incredibly diverse team. Um, so I'm being bold this year and I am going to become an international speaker. So that's my be bold for change. I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone again um, and trying to do some, some talks internationally. That's fantastic and good luck to you. Best of luck to you for that. So I look forward to seeing you again soon. And thank you again for uh, spending this time with us and with me. Thank you. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.